who is likely to be chosen as Raila Odinga's running mate in the upcoming general election. Because Raila Odinga has already initiated the process of identifying a suitable candidate for his running mate. And several names are being floated. The name of Martha Karwa is featuring prominently. The name of uh, Peter Munya is also featuring prominently. The name of Stephen Kanozo Musioka is also featuring prominently. And the question which most Kenyans are asking is just one. Who is going to be Raila Odinga's running mate? And how is the choice of the running mate going to impact on the future of President Uhuru Kenyatta's politics? Because the truth of the matter is that the choice of Raila Odinga's running mate is going to have an impact on President Uhuru Kenyatta's political future. So in this video, I want us to look at how the choice of Raila Odinga's running mate could actually make or destroy President Uhuru Kenyatta's political future in this country. Before we do that, in case you are watching this channel for the first time, please just click that subscribe button. To the subscribers, I want to apologize. For the past uh, few days, I've been busy. Even if you saw me or you see me doing video here and there, the truth is on uh, Saturday, on Sunday, I was in Kitale. On Monday, yesterday, the whole of yesterday, I was in Migori. But today, I am here. I want to make up for the time lost. Now, I want us to look at this choice of Raila Odinga's running mate. I've always opined on this platform that the choice of the running mate is going to either make Raila Odinga the president or not. And a suitable running mate should be able to bring support to the camp. For example, Raila Odinga cannot choose a running mate from the Gusi region now because that's part of Nyanza. Raila Odinga cannot have, for example, a running mate from Rift Valley because that will not give him numbers. Rift Valley is already William Ruto's stronghold. The other truth is that Raila Odinga must look for a running mate who will be able to attract funding. Someone like Peter Kenneth can easily attract the funding of the Mount Kenya Foundation. And both funding can be easily used, politically speaking, to win more votes from other parts of the country. The other fact is that there is also the equation of gender. William Ruto already has the support of the youth or the youthful generation is leaning towards the deputy president. So to cancel that, probably, Raila Odinga would require a woman so that the woman will now tilt the women voting block to Raila Odinga's side. The other thing is that a running mate should be able to help Raila Odinga in his campaigns even when he's not there. For example, when Kibaki was involved in an accident, Raila Odinga easily managed to fit in. William Ruto was able to campaign for President Uhuru Kenyatta even when the president was not available. So a running mate and the choice is something which must be well thought out so that it meets some basic requirements. But President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta is going to play a key role in Raila Odinga's politics. He has already prevailed upon several other people not to contest. In fact, the, mere, in fact, the reason why Muslim Davadi and Stephen Kalonzo Musioka and even Moses Wetangula are not running is probably because President Uru Kenyatta prevailed upon them. They had hoped that they were going to support. I mean, they, they had hoped that the president was going to support them. But when the president exhibited signs that he was leaning towards Raila Odinga, then it meant, it meant they were not going to make any impact. So Mudavadi and Kalonzo, I mean Mudavadi and Weta went root away and Kalonzo now joined Raila Amul Odinga. But how is the choice of the running mate going to impact on President Uru Kenyatta's political future? The truth of the matter is that at the age, at the current age of the president, is still going to be very influential as far as the politics of this country is concerned. Uhuru Kenyatta, first of all, is a son of a former president. Number two, Uhuru Kenyatta is, a, is the sitting president of the Republic of Kenya. 
even if he, he will retire, then people will still go to him. His voice will still be powerful. So how will the choice of a running mate affect President Uhuru Kenyatta? In my view, it's going to affect President Uhuru Kenyatta in this particular way. Number one is the Mount Kenya succession politics. Now, assuming Raila Odinga today decides and nominates Martha Karwa <coughs> as the running mate and assume they go ahead and win in August. And Martha Karwa and Raila Odinga become a team and they work very smoothly. Martha Karwa can easily use the position of the deputy president <coughs> to plan her own succession politics. Because Uru Kenyatta, <coughs> in my view, is not keen on letting someone from the larger Mount Kenya region to emerge. Because he still wants to be the leader. So he would want someone, even if that person is going to come from the larger Mount Kenya region, he would want someone he's sure of will not try to interfere with his position as the kingpin of the larger Mount Kenya region. And that's why President Ru Kenyatta is still remaining as the Jubilee Party leader, despite the fact that he's a retiring president. So that choice is going to determine the succession politics in the larger Mount Kenya region. If, for example, Kalonzo Musioka will be chosen, it will, it will automatically mean that Uhuru Kenyatta will still be the kingpin of the larger Mount Kenya region. And if someone will try to, <clears throat> to take over the role, then that person will have to begin from position zero. So in my view, the choice, the person Raila Odinga is going to choose as his uh, running mate will have to be someone who is not going to interfere with President Uru Kenyatta's succession, succession politics, especially in the larger Mount Kenya region. If that's going to happen, then re rest assured, the president is not going to allow that to happen. Number two, <clears throat> and I want to use the case of Ruto and Uhuru. You know, when Ruto and Uhuru became the president, they were referred to as dynamic duo. Within a very short time, Ruto created a second center of power. So the choice of a running mate can actually lead to two centers of power, depending on the personalities. And that's why it's always recommended that when you are going to choose a running mate, then that running mate should be someone who is not ambitious. That running mate should not be someone who will create another center of power. Not that powerful, but powerful. You know, assuming Raila Odinga becomes the president, <clears throat> at his age, it is expected, and just the way the, way the UDR are saying, that is going to be a puppet in quotes. A puppet would mean that Uhuru Kenyatta would still control him. But if you have a, a, power, a, a, press, a deputy president who is powerful, then that deputy president is going to create a second center of power. So instead of people going to state house to see Raila Odinga, they will now be going to Karen to see or to meet with the deputy president. Or they will be going to to office of the president annex, the office where the deputy president is supposed to be sitting, and people will be going there. So the truth of the matter, if a second power, center of power will be created, then it means President Rukinata will be relegated to maybe a third center of power. And that's something which I don't think the president is ready for. Because in my view, President Ru Kenyatta is keen on making Raila Odinga a uh, one-term president, what they refer to as Mandela's moment, so that he will serve one term. Then during this one term, Uhuru Kenyatta <coughs> and his team will be planning on who is going to succeed Raila Odinga. So if they have a very powerful deputy president, then that de de deputy president will decide, okay, that's not going to happen. I'm here, I can also scheme on how to become the president and therefore a second center of power which will now reduce Uhuru Kenyatta's power. Number three is the disruption of President Uhuru Kenyatta's succession politics and plan. Uhuru Kenyatta is very keen on who is going to succeed him and who is going to succeed Raila Odinga. He's very keen on that. And based on my own understanding, <coughs> Uhuru Kenyatta is planning to have Raila and either after Raila, Gideon Moy, or he will transfer this power to the larger Mount Kenya region. 
or in my view Uhuru Kenyatta is just keen on ensuring that William Ruto will not succeed in his politics and therefore <coughs> the choice of the running mate should not be able to disrupt his plan. If you have a powerful running mate and you have a powerful president and they are working together so it means these guys will not allow Uhuru Kenyatta to plan for them. The deputy president might decide to support Raila Odinga again in 2027. What will the president do? What will he do? Nothing. He can't stop them. So there must be someone who will be able to play the balls, in my view. And lastly, <clears throat> and this is the truth, the Building Bridges Initiative process was intended to achieve certain political objectives. Now, BBI collapsed. And Uhuru Kenyatta is on record stating that BBI is just a deferred dream. Which means in President Uhuru Kenyatta's plans and mind, BBI is something which should still be on the plans. Which means, therefore, that if, for example, <coughs> Relu Dinga and the running mate will be working together, then they can decide to thwart any attempt to change the constitution. Because the truth is, the new constitution was going to bring on board a prime minister. A deputy president and a president would not allow their powers to be reduced. So they'll collude and thwart any attempts to create more position. Because if you have a prime minister, then it means most of the roles of the deputy president will be taken away. Those of the president will be taken away. So once they are in power, they can say, okay, we are not going to allow anything which is going to disrupt our plans for the country. And therefore, they are going to resist any change of the constitution. Uhuru Kenyatta is planning to make a comeback into Kenyan politics through the change of constitution, which means the constitution will be changed, the next prime minister will be chosen by parliament, so Uhuru Kenyatta will have his jubilee party, then maybe in, in, even if that those changes will not happen in uh, 2022, between 2022 and 2027, then he can scheme to, be, to make a comeback as a prime minister using the numerical strength of the people of the larger Mount Kenya region. So Jubilee will be there. In 2027, he will be able to sponsor Jubilee candidates to win. Probably Raila Odinga will not be running again. And his plan is to make a comeback. So a deputy president would not want this to happen. So they will be able to thwart any attempt by the president, in my view, to change the constitution. I don't know what to think, but that's my take. If you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support because without the support, this channel cannot be where it is. Thank you guys and please may you have a good day. Bye-bye.